cubes rotating just fine. Looking good, feeling good. I like the timing, I like the curve. So, let's extract this code into a separate script so each cube can rotate itself. <clears throat> Call this cube rotator. Let's drop it onto our cube and apply the changes. So we're going to need to pull all of this stuff out into the rotator. I think we still will need the selected cube. <clears throat> so here we're telling it to rotate selected. This is all code that can go in the cube rotator update. <clears throat> and instead of selected cube, we're going to use this. Because now it is <clears throat> applied to the cube itself. This is going to go into another function in our cube rotator. I'll call this begin rotate. Actually, let's just pass it the quaternion, right? Rotate by. <clears throat> so the start rotation is going to be its current rotation. And we're going to just say rotate by, I want you to apply this quaternion to the start rotation. <clears throat> and let's see. So we're going to need a cube rotator. Uh, selected cube will get the component cube rotator. Rotator dot begin rotate quaternion dot boiler. And I think I just said direction times degrees. And this should we'll say if it is currently rotating, we're just going to exit the function early. We'll pick the same curve. I very much like the feel of that. We'll apply. So now everything should just work the same. Whenever you're refactoring... Okay. Let's do a bigger test. Let's say this one takes five seconds to rotate. This one takes two seconds to rotate. So now you can see that we've actually got <clears throat> the ability to rotate many cubes at once.
maybe we can make a note to ourselves <clears throat> that we'll want to. Like maybe if the user presses and holds right, as soon as this rotation is done, it should automatically rotate again. That actually shouldn't be too hard of a <clears throat> thing to change. We can just do this get key. And since this is a get key, it's going to fire every frame. <clears throat> I'm not that comfortable calling get component every frame. So let's make a private. Oops. Oh, geez. We'll call this selected rotator. <clears throat> so instead of doing it every frame in the rotate selected, let's just grab it in here whenever the new cube is set as selected. <clears throat> this is only one line of code. Let's rename this to Axis Around. Seems a little bit better. Nice. Let's do a test. Everything should have reverted back to 0 0.3. Now if I just press and hold D. Yeah. Cool. I like that. <clears throat> So we've got our cube rotating working now. Feeling kind of nice. The next goal, I guess... I guess we need to start building out... the... pathways and spawning the pathways on top of the cubes. <clears throat> so I'm mostly a scripter programmer. I am not very good at making 3D assets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the stream now and I'm going to spend some time offline doing research, <clears throat> trying to figure out how to make these paths that I want to make. Oh, uh, you know, we could generate them programmatically. That might be kind of cool. I like that. Let's just let's just go balls to the wall. We'll build them with cubes. <clears throat> Not with cubes. Well, probably with cubes to start, but we can get a little bit fancier after that. <clears throat> so currently, as of right now, <clears throat> I have plans for two types of pathways. We're going to have a bend pathway that goes on top of the cube, or we're going to have a straight pathway that will go on top of the cube <clears throat> or on any face. This one's going to be a little bit trickier. And remember, these are going to be, well, um, you know, this is just a prototype. Yeah, it's just a prototype. <clears throat> so what we're going to want to do is we're just going to make prefabs using general unity sized cubes. But let's think about the proportions, right? So if this is the face of a cube, and it's one by one, how big of a path do we want? What percentage of the cube? I mean, I guess 33%. 
Oh, you know what we could do? Let's parameterize this. And by parameterize, I mean, let's make it a variable. <clears throat> oh, you know what? If it was a variable, then we'd be generating them through code. So this is on our to-do list. Eventually, we'll want to parameterize this width. And that could actually have some interesting gameplay impacts, you know, on how the design of the game. Maybe fat witlings can't walk on thin paths, that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay, so I take it back. I'm not going to end the scene. We're going to create an empty game object. Ooh, and you know what? I didn't follow my general path. Let's do let's do the general pattern this time, and then we'll modify the cube core later. So what I mean by the general path is I like to have a parent game object that just has the scripts and maybe a rigid body, maybe a collider. <clears throat> and then the child object would contain the mesh. That'll make it easy for us to change mesh at runtime. So this is going to be a straight path. So this cube should be at zero, zero, zero. We can delete these other ones. And so I'm going to create a new empty game object and we'll call this meshes. And then this is going to have two cubes inside of it. Let's put this at 0 0.5 on the Y, this straight path. Another good reason why I am breaking it up this way is so the base of the object can be directly on the cube. We can just let the offsets of the other cubes uh, just move them relative to this game object. That way they'll just sit nice and flush on the top of the cube here. So let's make a new cube. So let's see the Y height 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.1. And that would mean it need to move up 0 0.5. Oh, 0 0.05 on the Y. There we go, so now you can see it's flush. Let's change the X scale to 0 0.3. And that means its X position is going to be, oh boy, negative 0.65? Oh, so close! Um, Negative 0.35. So we'll call this our wall. We'll duplicate it. And let's put this at positive 0.35. How does this look? A little path for our guys to walk on. Nice. Let's get some materials going in here. So we'll call this path mat. Or no, no, no. Path wall mat. More specific, I like that. Maybe like a darker blue. I'll select both of these walls and let's drop this material on there. Okay. I'm not sure how I feel about this um, point 0.3. It seems a little bit large, but if I did point 0.4 on each side, that would mean there's point 0.2. Um, let's do 
0.35 and that would mean this is negative 0.3 oh Is that right? It still doesn't seem exactly on. <laughs> Math is fun. You know what, I like this even less. <laughs> uh, let's try 0.33, the original. Ooh, it's just a little bit off. I have a feeling that 0.33 is going to look pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Fairly balanced looking. Now we have our straight path built. Um, let's turn that off and let's build our L path. This will be at zero, zero point five, make it flush with the cube, zero. Here's our empty game object to hold our meshes. meshes. This is going to require three cubes. Our height was 0 0.1, our offset was positive 0 0.05, I did that twice now. And let's see, the scale, I'm going to do this bottom right corner here, is going to be 0 0.33, 0 0.33. Point three three five. Negative point three three five. And just to be safe, let's do this and I'll hold the V button for the locking. There we go. Beautiful. <clears throat> When you're trying to get items to line up, you can hold the V key with the transform thing selected, and that will automatically snap that item so that those two vertices are 100% flush. Super useful tool. Probably could have used that instead of doing the math. <laughs> That's what I'll do this time. So we'll call this... Um, small square wall. Let's duplicate it. And let's see, what's the... the Z scale? Let's make it one. This will be our large wall. And I can use the V trick. There we go. We can put the Z at zero. So let's duplicate our large wall. We'll change the scale. Now the Z is going to be 0 0.33. And our scale is going to be 
That seems entirely too small. We'll use our V trick. Maybe it's got to be 0. 0.665. Oh my. 0.667? That seems a little bit too large, but... Not even. 0 0.33. 0 0.67. <laughs> Math. Math. V. Perfect. And we'll call this medium wall. Okay, and I think our L path is done. We just need to apply our material here. Very cool. Oops. So the next order of business is I want to... Oh, you know what? There's one more path. A no path. Uh, let's lock this prefab in. Oh my, what's going on here? I saw a little bit of the edge. Mm -hmm. No, they look they look flush. Okay. Even though this no path object is going to be incredibly simple. I still want to follow my regular setup. It is a little extra work, but it keeps all of our prefabs with the same sort of setup. And sticking to a convention or a standard is really helpful as a game starts to progress and grow in size. So, this was our... Um... What would we call this? Huge wall? Um, just wall. Oops, that was supposed to be a cube. Whoa! Our no path should be at 0 0.5. And our cube offset should be 0 0.05. We'll turn off our L path. And apply our material. Looking good. Let's prefab that. Oh, geez, wrong spot. That's okay. Oops, wrong spot again. These things happen. Let's put this in a folder called Path Faces. Make sure everything still works. Cool. Hmm. 
What should we do next? I guess what we want to do is randomize these cube faces. I'm actually not sure if randomization is a good tactic. It's an interesting design challenge, because <clears throat> if I do randomize them, there might be a chance that the cubes, or that the puzzle, is unsolvable. I don't want it to be unsolvable, but I do want to randomize it, so I'll probably have to write a randomizer and then a solver, and if the solver cannot solve the puzzle, then... Um, Re-randomize. Or I could randomize a solved puzzle and scramble it up. That's looking really far into the future. I want to make sure this just works first. So I guess what we're going to need to do... Let's not randomize it yet. Let's have a set test cube. But these prefabs are terrible. I think that's what I'll do. I'll make a face spawner. Cube face spawner. And this is going to serialize field private game object array faces or face prefabs. I'm going to have to reopen my Visual Studio. Uh -uh. Okay. I might want a public enum here. Global enum. How about we just call it face direction? Okay, cube face direction. Sure, sure. And this will be up. Right. Down. Left, forward, back. And in awake, first of all, let's assert import unity assertions. Let's assert that assert that face prefabs dot length equals six. Assert is a static class. R equal... Really? Is that what we need to do? Cube face spawner must have six prefabs to spawn. This will be removed in a later version once randomization 
has been implemented. Sure. That seems fine to me. So the next trick. Hmm. I feel like we're going to need Because essentially we need to spawn the thing, we need to move it in the proper direction, and then we need to orient it in the proper rotation. Hey, Musico. I assumed you were an entire library. You are. What's happening here? It's not very happy with me right now. Maybe we can make a cube face class. And this will have a public vector three offset and a public quaternion rotation. So let's try to make a static, or maybe const is what we want. Yeah, nobody's going to be able to change this. I think we're going to need a dictionary. And the key is going to be the cube face direction. Then the value is going to be a cube face. We need to use a new dictionary. So each of these entries is going to be a What's going on here? <laughs> okay. Very bizarre. So up is zero point five positive on the Y, and the Quaternion, and we can just do quaternion.identity.
Ah, I tell you what, let's make a constructor for cube face. And this should work just fine. <clears throat> so now with this, I can say new cube face, call our constructor. Oh, and I'll need another new here. That's so gross. Wee! Is that going to compile? Unexpected symbol void. I thought so. Semicolon. Oh my. Oh, I didn't have a closing curly bracket here. Oh, Jesus. The expression being assigned must be constant. Ugh. You know what? Let's let's comment this out. Let's do some testing. Let's turn L path on, and I do believe that if we rotate it, it's just going to rotate around that spot. Indeed. But we do know that a 90 degree rotation on the X is what's going to give us our right cube face. Aha! Static worked instead of const. Okay. <laughs> so we've got up, right, down, left, forward, oops, back. So to the right, that is 0.5F on the X. So we know that left is going to be negative 0.5 on the X. And negative 90 on the X rotation. So forward, I do believe we're going to be rotating around the Z. Yeah, so forward is positive 90 on the Z. And I'll just go, geez. Let's copy that. 
this is back. This is a negative 90. Missing some parentheses there. <clears throat> and the last one is down. So this will be negative 0.5. And I have two axes to operate on. I can rotate it... ...on the X-180, or on the Z-180. Let's just do it on the X. So now we have our... ...face dictionary. Not the prettiest thing of all time, but it should make the rest of our code nice and pretty. So, for... We'll call this face index. While face index is less than six, This is going to be our game object, new face, and we'll instantiate face prefabs at face index with the position being, uh, you know, let's just do it this way. <laughs> this is easier to read. So I'm going to need to cast face index as a cube face direction. And I'm going to need to index into our face dictionary with that set up and then give it the offset. Actually, cube face, current face. Let's only do this once because it's kind of ugly. There we go. Now we can just use our current face offset. Oh shoot. Let's do it here. Current face offset and current face rotation. And that should spawn all six of our cubes. Turn off our L path, look at our cube core. We'll drop our cube face spawner on here. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to our cube core. Oops, we'll apply changes later. So this is top, uh, right, bottom, left, oh, Forward, back. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Damn. So, our top and bottom worked fine. These two are almost identical. Z offset. Oh, I must have missed a negative 0.5. Yep. So that's bizarre to me.
So it's almost like I spawned the... <clears throat> I did the wrong direction for each of these. So there's our camera, here's our top, and our right, I do... Okay, so our right looks like it needs to be negative 90 on the Z. Let's just go in here and start changing stuff. I will test it just one at a time, you know? Make sure no path is fine. This L path. Needs to be 90. Okay. So down is fine, left is wrong. And I'm just gonna guess here. Let's set forward to negative 90. And back to a solid 90. Positive. Nope. <laughs> it looks like they're inside. Yep. Okay. It's always worth experimenting. Rotations are so tricky. But once we get this working... Oh, <laughs> they are not parented. <laughs> I don't know, that looks like a pretty cool effect. Let's get the parenting happening. So here's our new face, and we're gonna say new face, transform, set parent. This transform position, and I do want the world position to stay. Oops, just this transform. Yeah. Ooh, and the flash of off the metallic. Ooh, I like it. I like it. might be it for today yeah I did a fair amount <clears throat> so thank you everybody for coming I guess nobody came but hopefully somebody watches this and enjoys um, the next goal what I'd like to do is I mean we got a couple options we could do the randomize um, uh, right now we're just sort of flipping it this way and pushing it out I'd also like to flip, push, and spin, you know, rotate some random amount to give it more randomness in that uh, respect. And after that, we've pretty much got pathfinding to work on. That'll be a nice chunk of time. So that's it for me today. My name is Billy Lemonzest. I hope you all learned a little bit, had some fun, and I'll see you tomorrow.